you very much for the invitation. Yeah, it's a nice city, and I've been here four times. It's my fourth time, and I'm enjoying it just like uh, the first time I was here. Uh, okay, so they asked me to give the title way too early, and I was <laughs> <laughs> much more ambitious back then. Uh, so, and then I realized that this is not in the model theory conference. So the my, my so my first slide became my last slide. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to give you some ideas and maybe some uh, way of thinking that the uh, inner model theory thing, and then at the end I'll uh, I'll tell you what I <laughs> was planning to say at the beginning. Okay, all right. So, uh, well, we begin with continuum hypothesis. Of course, C H says that uh, given a subset of reals, it's either countable or has the size continuum. Is is this working? Yes. Well, if it wasn't working, people would complain, I guess. OK, but then you can also say, yes, yeah, so you can also write it that way, which means you're asking how many reals there are. Uh, I like the first one, because the first one doesn't quite ask you to, com to count how many more in question about definable subsets of reals. Uh, OK, so what happened? Well, we, we know what happened. Gordo proved in 38 that, uh, and he did not need choice, that you can build what, what he called constructible universe and, and show that, uh, you know, starting from a model of ZF, you can build a model of ZFC plus C. And of course, Cohen, man, many years later, discovered forcing and uh, showed that you can also force not CH, yeah? Okay, so that's what happened. Uh, Okay, so most talks these days in set theory conferences concentrate on Cohen's work, yeah? In pure, on the pure side, there's of course the applications. But, but this talk is gonna be on, about the first one, so I would like to tell you at least how you all prove that. Uh, okay, so what did he do? Well, he, I don't know if that was his motivation, but for me, the point is just two. Yeah, you, you think of, well, that the power set operation is too vague, and you try to restrict it to the smallest, meaningful thing it could be. Namely, you just take the definable subsets, then you keep the general schema for commutative hierarchy, at limits you take the unions and etc. Okay, so you build that, that's called the constructible universe, and then the, the greatest thing is that that model satisfies ZFC plus CH. Yeah, so the point being that we didn't have to take all subsets, yeah? That is, that's kind of what the point, at least that's how, I wasn't around in 1938, I don't know that, <laughs> that's what he was thinking, but to me this is what it says, that the point is that you don't have to take all subsets, you can take the ones that are definable. Okay, so I'm going to take that point and go further with that. Uh, this is just some personal things I was thinking while a graduate student. Uh, if we don't know the answer CH, to me that seems to say that we don't know what concrete understanding of what real numbers are. In the sense that we do know what integers are, we know what we can distinguish the standard one from the non-standard one, but we don't seem to have that sort of understanding of reals. Okay, so if you take the, the point that we don't have to take all subsets uh, of a cardinal, we just have to take the nice ones. If you take that point more seriously, then you can uh, define what a standard real is, yeah? A standard real is one that appears in the canonical countable model of set theory. Now, I don't know if that raises eyebrows, but, so this means that, for instance, you cannot force the, all the reals you add, they are uh, non-standard. They appear in the Boolean ultra power of, of the universe. Okay, but you could lose if you think this way, you might lose things, yeah? You might not be able, to, the set theory might become weaker because you're, you're only taking the nice objects. Okay, so the second point would be that that doesn't happen. Now, so if this view is actually consistent with, uh, you don't lose any power, set theoretic power when you do that. You can still force your PFA, you can still, you know, have failure of square, et cetera. All right, so this, if you heard Hugh Wooden talk, then he usually, in my opinion, articulates the same point, but he wants to have an axiom. 
and he calls that ultimate L axiom. So this is, I, I don't like axioms for some reason, and <laughs> he likes axioms. <laughs> so anyway, this is, this is that. Okay, so, uh, uh, so let's go on, let's try to see, you know, why, why it's often said that V is not equal to L. I want to tell you exactly why, but a bit differently than it usually, uh, way, differently than how it's usually explained. Okay, so let's let's write down something that's trivial. Yeah. Uh, if I have a set of reals and I want to know if that is all the standard reals, then I better be not perceive of an algorithm that gives me a real which is not in my set. <coughs> so if I have a set X and I could perceive an algorithm, a canonical algorithm that halts and gives me a real which is not in X, then it will be very hard to argue that X is the set of reals, yeah? Uh, well, we need a reference point for this, because some, if your algorithm may not halt, if you are in this restricted situation, it may not halt. Okay, so, uh, well, the set of standard reals must be maximal. It, it, should, it should be closed on the algorithms. Uh, okay, so I'm about to describe in the next slide a, an algorithm that would produce a real which is not enough. Okay? And, uh, and what we do, essentially, is the usual thing, but I don't think, people usually don't do it this way. Yeah? They say there's an embedding from L to L and et cetera. But I would, I would like to, you to see that you can write it as an algorithm. Yeah? So there's an actual procedure that produces a real. Uh, and we just do L construction until we see a, a real. Okay, so we define a sequence. We start with the empty set, like we always do. Then. At limits, of course, we're going to take unions. Uh, it's the successive stage that will do something different. Uh, OK, so what do we do with successes? Well, suppose you reached an actual cardinal initial segment of L, a successor cardinal initial segment of L. Yeah, so there's a couple plus of L over there. It's not that there is a, you reach the level that thinks there is a largest cardinal, etc., but you actually reach a successor cardinal initial segment of L. Yes? Uh, uh, you have not, sorry. <laughs> well, then do you, you close on the definability. Okay, so I have to tell you what happens if you do, if you do reach such a level. Uh, well, if, if this desirable condition does not happen, then you again close on the uh, definability. Now, I, I wouldn't recommend that you read through that line now, because it repeats here. Okay, so suppose you did reach a cardinal success initial segment of L, and then you were able to also find an ultra filter over that level, which is amenable to, your, uh, to the structure that you add, uh, to the level of the construction you add. Okay, that just means that pieces of the ultra filter are inside the model, that's what it means, and this external hypothesis, the, uh, the, this, you want the, the structure to be omega one iterable. And that just says, we, you know, it's an ultra filter, so you can take an ultra power. If that's well founded, you can keep, continue doing that, the ultra power construction. Okay, so you have embeddings between these uh, ultra powers, and at limits, you can take direct limits, yes? Okay, so that would, what, what we mean by iteration, except you have to require that the models are well-founded. So when we say it's omega one iterable, we mean that all the models you get in this fashion by iterating the ultra power construction are well-founded. That is an extra condition, and, and, and here the usual proof will not go through because I'm not saying mu is countably complete. So you have to actually require that. Okay, so if you see something like that, then you stop. Okay, and you declare that to be your last model. All right, so I'm going to be slow. Okay, let's say that the co construction converges if we do end up with such a pair. And then, you know, as I stated, the, the condition three, you find a ultra filter, so there could be many of them, which means there are many possibilities for the last model. Uh, okay, so we're going to call the objects like those last models mice. 
Uh, and then all the, all the properties of being a mouse is first order except the omega-1 irritability. Yeah? OK, so let me, let me, let's make that definition more precise. OK, so what is a mouse? A mouse is uh, a structure. We have M and, um, and an ultra filter mu. M is a cardinal, successor cardinal initial segment of L. Mu is an ultra filter over M, which is amenable. So pieces of M uh, of the ultra filter are inside M. And then I use ex external condition that M is omega 1 irritable. Okay, which means that interactive construction, hello, Juan. Okay. Uh, well, x is in m. Oh, oh, I see. I didn't say that mu is a ultra filter on kappa. Sorry, mu measures subsets of kappa. So, it's just, yeah, you have you need an extra condition that mu is a sub, measures subsets of kappa. Sorry. So, so it cannot actually be there, yeah? Okay, so suppose you did this, why is this any good? Uh, okay, so what I'm about to describe is due to probably even more people than I have over there. And it was done in between 65 to 75. Uh, suppose there is a mouse, then there is a mouse that is point-wise sigma one definable, yeah? Well, this is, the idea is easy, the proof is a little bit harder. You have any mouse, we can take a sigma one hole. We all know how to do skull and hole. Yeah, you have a structure. Just take the skull and hole. Okay, but now you have an embedding from the hole to the model itself. A mouse had an external property, which was the irritability. You now have to prove that the hole is irritable. Okay, so that's the difficulty in proving this. Yeah, if 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 M is a mouse and N embeds into M, it's not automatic that N is also a mouse because a mouse has an extra, a second order condition, yeah? Something that's not, and, and irritability is not first order. And so you have, to, you have to do some work. Okay, all right, so uh, if you have a sigma one definable, point by sigma one definable mouse, then all the other ones are its iterates, <laughs> yeah? Uh, okay, what that says is that there is only one a unique sigma one point-wise sigma one definable mouse. If there were two, you would, one would be, they would embed into each other uh, and you would get a contradiction. And then, of course, if there is a measurable cardinal, then the mouse construction converges and produces a mouse. Okay, so this unique point-wise sigma one definable thing, mouse, cannot be in L. Because, why? If you take the, the measure and iterate it through the ordinals, uh, what you leave behind is L, right? So if it is in L, you know, well, it, it's accountable, it's a real, yeah, essentially, because it's point y sigma one definable. You can code it as a real. So if you iterate it out, you, you, you end up with L. If it is in L, that means it must be in the first model. You cannot create reals as you iterate, you can only lose. So from, we've started from M, your mouse, you iterate it out, you ended up with L. If M is in L, yeah, then it's in M. And so M is in M contradiction. Uh, in other words, if, well, it's a good exercise to see why this mouse is not in L. The main point being that if you iterate the measure through the ordinals, you end up with L. Okay, so assume the existence of a measurable cardinal, then the mouse construction converges and produces a mouse, and that was the algorithm. Yeah, you do. Uh, that construction, if it halts, it would produce a real which is not in L. And to me, that says that it is not equal to L. Okay. And so we want to go on and do this for more complicated reals. Okay, so, so the first problem you'll encounter if you try to go beyond is that uh, is the problem of measures. Yeah, measures are not, they don't capture too much. The power set of power set of kappa. Yeah, U is a, power, is a subset of power set of kappa. And so U is an element of power set of power set of kappa. If, if it's in alt VU, then U is in alt VU, and that's basically no ultra filters. It's in, in its own ultra power. 
but you can achieve such a thing with extenders. Okay, let me take a few minutes to explain what extenders are. Uh, okay, so what is an extender? You have an embedding, critical point is kappa. Critical point is the least ordinal that's moved. Critical point is kappa, lambda is something else, uh, which is less than uh, to the image of kappa. Okay, so uh, e, let E be the set of pairs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I put a comma there. Why does it always show that? It should be A comma A, yeah? Okay, so little a is just a finite sequence from lambda. The big A is, uh, is a, a subset of kappa to cardinality of A, and you require that little a is in the image of, uh, of, of big A. And then we say that E is the kappa lambda extended derived from J. So this is very parallel to the way we derive measures from embeddings. Uh, if you notice, you really just took, uh, you, you found some coherent way of putting many outer groups together. If you, if you look at the section of E given by small a's, they are just ultra filters. Yeah, so you basically have found some nice coherent way of putting ultra filters together. Uh, there is a point I would like to make. That these are the short extenders. You'll get long extenders if you require lambda is less, greater than JF kappa. Except when you do that, the measures, those sections, yeah, the sections will still be measures, but they will not concentrate on finite sequences from kappa, but you might have bigger cardinals on which they would concentrate. So they, they come, they have, there are other difficult problems to solve. So most of the problems uh, of inner model theory that we have occur in the short uh, region. Uh, now, I'm, I'm often asked what's the relationship between what Wooden does and, and, and what I usually talk about. Well, Wooden talks about long extenders, and there's a different set of problems to solve, but the, uh, but the uh, irritability problem, the problem uh, of actually building mice, yeah, those problems exist below short, uh, below long extenders. You don't have to go to long extenders to encounter these problems, yeah? And going there doesn't make the problem easy, <laughs> it makes it only harder. <laughs> so, uh, what wouldn't, uh, uh, the, the, the problem of defining uh, what, what the notion of mouse is for super compact cardinals had additional set of problems that you need to solve and wouldn't has been concentrated on those problems, yeah? So the, the other problems that I'm about to describe, those are below short, uh, long extenders. So you don't need to go to that level to see those problems. And that's why we will not go there. Okay, so uh, uh, if E is a kappa lambda extender derived from an embedding, then you can make sense of the ultra power just like you, we make the, it's a very standard construction similar to the ultra power construction. If you look at the functions and et cetera. Uh, a key point is that if you start with an embedding that captures an, uh, a large initial segment of, of V, then the ultra power also will c capture that initial segment of V. Right, so if V lambda is inside, <laughs> They are M, and you derive the corresponding extender, then the ultra power would capture that much. Okay, so all large cardinals below super strong can be redefined using extenders. Just go through definitions one by one, and every time you see there is an embedding, change it to there is an extender. Uh, okay, so what I'm about to do is to describe a mouse construction similar to the construction I gave at the beginning that was supposed to put us outside of L. So it will be similar construction, but it will be general. So there won't be, we won't stop as soon as we see one measure. Yeah? We will keep going and try to get all the large cardinals into the model. And by the way, we, we don't really know of anything else to, so that we get into our model. Large cardinals are the only things that we would like. Yeah? There's no other source of strength in set theory that we know of. And that's why we just try to get large cardinals. Uh, so you, if you produce another one, <laughs> that, that would kind of defeat this program. Uh, okay. Uh, so Wooden's constructions are supposed to go further, but again, the pro I, I kind of like to make this point very clear. <laughs> I keep repeating it. The, uh, the, the 
problem of showing that the construction converges occurs below long extenders. So you don't need to go through Wooden's work to understand what the problem is. Okay, so let's define the construction. Uh, okay, so what are we gonna do? Well, there are all these extenders floating around. We, we're gonna start like we start with L, with the measure case, the, the case that I outlined in the beginning, and then we see extenders from outside. We're gonna put that as predicate and go on. Yeah, so that's the idea. Okay, so these are the easy cases. We start with the empty, and then something called add extender condition fails. We, can, we cannot find an extender to add. The add extender condition is explained in the next slide. Don't look for it. Uh, okay, so, oh, TC, TC is supposed to stand for transitive clubs, not transitive closure. <laughs> I, I, th I thought I changed that. Uh, okay, and then at limit steps, we, we kind of take the limit. We don't, we don't take the union, we take the limit. And here's what that means. Uh, because of case two, yeah, you're, you're taking, yeah, you have your model, you edit an extender of whatever, you take a hole. When you take a hole, it collapses. So if you had a subset of your cardinal kappa that survived whatever many steps, you, you might lose it yeah, because of this collapsing. Okay, which means that what we have to do is we have to hope for some sort of stabilization, and that happens. Yeah. If, uh, so M alpha is really just defined by induction on cardinals. If you have M alpha up to kappa, you define M alpha up to kappa plus as the stable version. Right. Okay, so what is the add extender condition? Well, imagine we had an embedding in, uh, in V. Yeah, so we had two cardinals, kappa less than lambda, lambda inaccessible. Uh, you can require whatever you want. Uh, the, the important property is, is that J coheres the construction we have done so far. Right? So J of C up to alpha is the same. The alpha F model is the same on, on the M side. Um, okay, so then what we do is we take the extender, kappa lambda extender from J, we intersect it with M alpha and add it to the, to the model. Then we let M alpha plus one be the transitive collapse of, well, N alpha, the whole of N alpha. And then that's it, this is the construction. It's extremely simple, yeah? You, you found some extender uh, in V that comes from an embedding, and then you basically took that extender and added to your construction. It seems like simple, <laughs> except I, I, I'm just lying to you. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, there, is, there are two options. I, I, I can either explain to you how to do it properly and not talk about the, fir the first slide, that's it now the last slide, or I can go on and talk about the last slide. The, okay, but let me at least tell you why I lied, yeah? Uh, okay, let's just say that the construction converges if it goes through all the ordinals, but why wouldn't it? Yeah, the way I define it, there's nothing that stops it from going further. Okay, the, the problem is, the problem is really this. Yeah, it's not that we take a hole, uh, because M alpha E alpha is not a model of set theory, it's not any sort of reasonable object. It has very small, uh, there's, there's a term called fine structure, yeah, it's, it's closure properties are with respect to smaller class of formulas, not what we are used to. Yeah, so I cannot really take a hole, I have to take what's called fine structure core. And these objects don't usually exist. There's a lot of work that goes into showing that that process can be done. Yeah. And usually all of the issues, fine structural issues that you would like to take care of, they all are resolved by something called the iterability hypothesis. Okay. So it's like transferring the problem. You, you know, you want to show that these constructions converge. Yeah. To show that they converge, you need to make sense of this whole condition. Okay, that follows from your ability hypothesis. If you have another way of showing it that you know you can do four, then great, but five is, is the only way we know how to do. Okay, so what is the ability hypothesis? It's, it's going to be something like the omega one ability 
in the case, in the first case I was outlining. Here's uh, the iterability hypothesis. Suppose you have a countable uh, hall of some initial segment of V, then M has an omega one plus one iteration strategy. Now, this problem, you don't really need to know any fine structure to think about this problem. Uh, um, it, it, that would, will be clear when I explain to you what iteration strategy is. Yeah? So you can solve the problem of showing that the construction converges without knowing any fine structure, yes? Okay, so what is irritability? Uh, at the beginning we were talking about omega one irritability and we only had one measure and there was only one thing to do, namely just keep taking ultra power. Yeah, you have uh, an ultra power, um, uh, an ultra filter, you take an ultra power, then you take the image and you just iterate that process. Okay, if you have more extenders, well, maybe you can become creative and change the extender as you go. Maybe you don't have to take the same one. <laughs> good, good. But, but, but then you can become even more creative and say, well, I don't want to take the ultra power of M1, but I want to take the ultra power of M. And then the question is, when can I do that? Uh, imagine you have some kappa, some lambda, and your E0 sends kappa, your E sends kappa to to here, you still have your lambda, and now say this is inaccessible, yeah? And now suppose you have some mu and some eta, and you have an extender E1, which is going to send mu above eta, yeah? So this is my M1, and this is my M, and I can do that other algebra power. So that will be J E1 mu. Okay, if lambda is inaccessible, so there is an agreement between these two models on the power set of mu. Yeah, M computes the same, has the same power set. And so you can actually take E1 and take the algebra power of M instead of M1. Okay, so you can do that. Uh, but if you do that, you lose linearity. And now, there is, if you always are allow, allowed to do this, if you always can go back, then you have a tree structure. Yeah, you might want to start with M, call it M0, then you go to M1, by some E, then you take E1 from here, come say here, form M2, take E2 from here, you might want to go there, form M3, and that's a so it's really tree. It's not a linear iteration anymore. But if you have a tree, we all know that the limits, there's a problem, right? <laughs> okay, all right, so how you take care of the limit state? Well, oh, so I was going fast, slow, and now I'm going fast. Uh, so, how, so what do you do with limits? Uh, well, it's best to think of it as a, as a, as a game. Yes, in which player one plays these extenders, and player two tells you what to do at the limit. Uh, oh, and the player two, of course, two, two is sort of the, the player we want to win, uh, but she might lose just by not doing anything, right? <laughs> you take one extender, form an ultra power, it's still found it, and then two lost. Okay, so two can lose without doing much. Uh, but basically that's how we think of iterations. It's, an, it's a game in which one plays extenders, two plays uh, limit steps. A strategy is a winning strategy for two, an alpha strategy is a winning strategy for a game that lasts alpha steps. Okay. All right, so the, a, a good question at this point would have been, why did you have to do that? Why couldn't you just continue with the linear iterations? Uh, and this has to do with something called moving generator problems that goes back to 80s. Uh, I don't know how many of you were alive. I, I wasn't. Uh, the problem was that at that time, there were inner models that had delta one three wall ordering of reals, and you cannot. And then there was Foreman, Magidor, and Shalach that said large cardinals imply you cannot have projective wall ordering of reals. Yes. Okay. So if you, you then you cannot solve inner model problem if you think. Yeah, the inner models cannot have super compact cardinals if, 
all you need is linear iteration because linear iterability is just a pi one one condition. So the problem was how you, what is the solution? And then it turned out that there's something called comparison lemma and to solve that you actually need trees. You need iteration trees. And then the complexity of the models goes up. Uh, so anyway, there is, uh, that is all that you can, you can read somewhere if you're interested. <laughs> So, so we really do have to do this. This is a required thing. It's not just some cosmetics, you know. Okay. Uh, okay. So, what is the what, what is the point? What what's the result? Suppose we do have uh, immutability hypothesis. Then Mitchell and Steele showed that the construction, the mouse construction out, outlined few slides back, converges. Okay. And moreover, it inherits all the wooden cardinals. Yes? Okay, so this step is important because remember, I was proposing this as a, as a way of defining real numbers. If this construction did not inherit large cardinals, then you could say, well, wait, wait a minute, <laughs> you lost complexity, yeah? But it does. Now, it's any large cardinal you can think of. Uh, and this is the current best known result. IH, the probability hypothesis holds if you assume there is no inner model with the wooden cardinal, that is a limit of wooden cardinal. Yeah. Which, by the way, is way weaker than super compact cardinal. Right? So, this is what I meant that you, this is Neiman's theorem is the best result we know today, and it's below super compact. It's not above super compact. Uh, okay. So what is descriptive? <laughs> what, I, what I have been outlining so far is what, what I would call classical in the model theory because these things are, you know, this is not 1800s, this is, <laughs> this is not the classical Renaissance period or something like that. This is just only 20 years ago. <laughs> But, but in a way, people sort of start, uh, because the problem became too difficult, people found, tried to, to, come, to approach the problem differently. Yeah. Uh, so Neiman's result is the best possible. Uh, if you solve the ability problem, that will lead to determinacy, clarify points I made about reals at the beginning. Finally, it will increase confidence in large cardinals because you have natural models for them. Uh, but, but there are some weak weaknesses to that approach. A weakness being that not all frameworks are large cardinal frameworks. We have PFA, which is a very good framework. Yeah, it's reduced to large cardinals, but uh, it's an in incredibly successful framework. Yeah? And there are other ones. There's generic embeddings and etc. And they don't have large cardinals in them. Now, what if you want to do something like what I have been doing from large cardinals under those axioms? Yes. And, and so you can't really do that. I mean, you can still kind of mimic the construction, but how you know that your construction will produce complicated objects? Now, that will be the question. The, the descriptive approach is more uniform and allows you such. Uh, oh, I. Did I. Yeah. So the descriptive approach allows you to translate between frameworks. So you can, if you take the descriptive approach, you can do the uh, similar sort of constructions in PFA or other, uh, using other frameworks. But there is a point I would like to make, to, and, and this point, uh, this is an important point. Yeah, it says that you just sort of cannot go on without descriptive set theory. And here's why. Well, we all know that there are orange on trees, omega one orange on trees, and what are you trying to do when you're trying to solve you know, the iterability hypothesis? You're building a strategy that's going to pick a branch for a tree of height omega and, and when you build that tree, you only see countable segments of that tree, yes? So how are you making sure as you build the tree that you didn't produce an omega one orange on tree? Right? So this is a serious problem. And, and the, the way we do today is by absoluteness arguments. Well, you, uh, did I have that? I think I, 
Okay, well, maybe I think I have it. There, there's some absoluteness arguments that you need to, I think I have it in the next slide. Well, so, so for the rest of the talk, a mouse is just gonna be a structure of this form. They have a model built from extenders and extender sequence and membership. Oh, so I somehow lost my slide. I had a slide explaining this point more clearly. So what happens is, is this, yeah? You have your tree of, of, of length omega one. So you, you, you want to make sure as you build the tree, you think of you as player two, yeah? So you want to make sure that at stage omega one, you're gonna be find, finding a branch, right? So it seems like a difficult problem. Okay, so as you build your tree, you want to make sure that the branch you pick at each level, at least open enough, is somehow definable. If, if you can do that, then at a stage omega one by some collapsing argument and some absoluteness argument, you can imagine you, you've done it in a way that the process is universally bare. Then when you collapse omega one, you'll find a branch for the collapse tree, but there is only one because it's a universally bare process. So it's in we kind of use this sort of argument. But this is a difficult, problem to solve and, and shows that you probably have to bring in some sort of definability, okay. All right, so uh, that what mouse is and, and then I want to start talking about descriptive model theory. So uh, I can't explain descriptive in a model theory the way I explain classical in model theory because I only have 10 more minutes or, or wait a minute, 10, yes, 10 more minutes, yeah. So that's why I would just sort of start from the middle and tell you what the main problems are, right? Uh, the, the main problems, the central problems are the hard problem. The, the first, maybe the, the most important one is the hard problem. And the problem being, you work inside a model of determinacy and you want to characterize its hard. Hard, uh, Omer's talk was the uh, class of hereditary ordinal definable sets. And then you want to prove that it is actually a mouse. Okay, so why would you want to do this? Well, it, it, it's, it's a natural question to ask if you know the history. If you don't know the history, maybe it's But it grew out naturally from the Cabal volumes. If you read Cabal volumes, they're asking questions. For instance, Maskovaki says a paper called The Playful Universe, and etc. And they're trying to do all kinds of determinacy proofs uh, they have certain models that they're trying to analyze, not exactly hard, but they're trying to prove that those models have nice properties, yeah? Uh, and so the hard problem is sort of the ultimate version of them. Uh, another source for its naturalness, yeah? Comes from Wooden's work. Wooden showed that if you assume AD, determinacy, then many cardinals are wooden cardinals in hard. And this has nothing to do with intermodal theory. He proved it using pure determinacy. Uh, there are other things, you know, the, the, the people, the cabal people, they knew that many cardinals below theta are measurable, they have strong partition properties and, and et cetera. Baker showed back in the 70s or early 80s that omega one is the least measurable cardinal of hard. So there was a lot of stuff done about hard and large cardinals, yeah? And, uh, uh, and that all that work culminated in Ford in the 90s, early 90s, Stephen Wooden showed that if you assume V equals L of R and AD in L of R, then HUD, V theta of HUD, theta being the successor of the continuum, is actually a mouse. Yeah, and so it satisfies GCH, it has diamond, it has square, blah, blah, blah. And, the, and moreover, I'm not saying that because we don't have much time. Theta itself is a wooden cardinal in there, in HUD. Okay, so one reason this problem is important is that the, the, pro the classical approach was giving you a procedure, yes, that you had to go through and then prove that that procedure converges, right? So there was no model to begin with. <laughs> in this approach, in the descriptive model theory approach, HUD is the model. <coughs> the difference being that you try to prove that HUD has the large cardinals. So you have the model, you try to prove that it has the large cardinals you want. In the other case, 
uh, we have the large kernels, we don't have to model. Yeah. So hope uh, we hope that this would be easier. Okay. So what is uh, uh, this is going getting close to my first slide. Uh, okay. So you want to work inside. A model of determinacy showed that every set of reals is continuously reducible to a set of reals coding an omega one iteration strategy. This is the old project of showing that set of reals have nice properties. Yeah, there have been many many theorems of this sort in Scalar set theory. Uh, that is sort of the nicest property a set of reals could have. The iteration strategies are very well understood objects. The hard problem, you can, I think, you have to do generation. We don't know of another way of doing it. So generation is important because of the hard problem. Uh, it's also a principle that allows you to transfer strength, large cardinal strength, into determinacy. So how would you get? Uh, ultimately, you want to prove something like if you have a large cardinal. So think of Wooden's ultimate L if you've seen. So you want to say that if you have a large cardinal, then the, then part of my determinacy model satisfies assuming a large cardinal. Okay. So how are you going to do that? Well. Generation is one of the techniques that will let you do that. Okay, so well, it's another way of three is another way of saying generation, except from V's point of view, not the terminacy point of view. Now you're saying that all university bear sets are reducible to relation strategies. Okay, then finally, another one of the central problems is mouse set conjecture, and that says that every OD real is in a mouse. Mice are Mice can only have OD reals, so that reverse direction is obvious. Uh, MSC is an example of a capturing hypothesis where you want to say, well, we know we know of this phenomena. It's like one, almost one of the first things we learn when we learn pure set theory, yeah? Schoenfeld's absoluteness theorem. Sigma 1, 2 is captured by L. So this is a generalization of that. The most complicated form of definability is captured by a model of set theory. Uh, it also, uh, okay, so what was the problem with point one? Point one is a problem that if you want to take the set of reals to be all the reals that are in, mouse, in mice, then you can say, well, you're basically telling me that I cannot perceive of another way of constructing a real that's canonical. Yeah? You had a that was giving you a real. Presumably, it's a good enough algorithm that's going to work in the determinacy model and produce an ordinal definable real. Yeah. Well, then it will be in a mouse. Okay. So you need generation for these two. Uh, and and then we have a test problem. Why do we need a test problem? Remember, the mo motivation for descriptive inner model theory is to do what classical inner model theory does in other frameworks. So you need, if you want to <laughs> convince others that you've done something, then you need something like this. Okay, so you, you want to do what uh, the classical thing does uh, on the PFA. All right, so some recent results. Uh, the largest Silstein axiom is the conjunction of the following statements, uh, AD plus, which is just some generalization of AD, a, well, by the way, AD, it's not that difficult to say what AD plus says. You're saying uh, AD, and then the collection of Susslin cos Susslin sets is sigma one elementary in V. I guess it is kind of thing. <laughs> 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 well, what AD plus says is that the universe looks like L of R. Yeah, so you want to make uh, AD does not say that the universe looks like L of R. You want to say that uh, universe looks like L of R, so you say it. You find few sentences. That that's actually is the greatest greatness of yeah, uh, the ingenuity of Wooden's ingenuity that he could come up with just four axioms that tell you that universe looks like L of R. Uh, but then it's open whether AD implies AD plus. So <laughs> so maybe it's just AD. Uh, uh, what is a Suslin cardinal? Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't have much time to. So, uh, just, uh, as a set is Suslin, kappa Suslin. If you have a descriptive set theoretic tree, yeah, so those are just set of finite sequences closed under initial segments, right? So you have a descriptive set theoretic tree whose projection, 
So you look at the set of branches. Oh, the tree itself is in omega cross kappa. Yeah. So the omega portions will give you a real. If you look, have a branch of such a tree, the omega coordinate will give you a real. The kappa coordinate will give you a countable sequence from kappa. OK, so you project onto the reals. Yeah. So then you say a set is suslin if it has such a representation. It's a projection of a tree. OK, you say a set is kappa suslin if the tree is on kappa. Yeah. And then you say delta is a suslin cardinal if there is a set which is delta suslin, but not kappa suslin for every kappa less than delta. OK, so it's some sort of closure property. And the third one, uh, you're, you're saying that delta is uh, somehow inaccessible. It's an accessibility condition, yeah? Somehow large. OK, so here's the theorem. If you assume there is a, if you assume either of them, PFA or the wooden cardinal, that is a limit of wooden cardinals, then you can get a class size model of LSA containing the real. Uh, the minimum model of LSA satisfies mouse set conjecture and generation. Consequently, the hut of the minimum model of LSA is a hut mouse. So all central problems of DIMT are resolved at the LSA level. Uh, so why was this important? Well, for two things. First of all, the ultimate L conjecture, if you know the form of it, uh, the, you know, it says that there is a, a set such that V is sigma 2 elementary in the, the heart of L of AR. Uh, that said, that L of AR is a model of LSA. So that, that's one thing. Another thing is uh, it was believed to be extremely strong. In fact, ADR plus data regular was believed to be extremely strong. Uh, in fact, I remember in graduate school thinking that I found contradiction in ZFC. Because, because wouldn't conjecture that ADR plus data regular was uh, beyond super compact. <laughs> and, and, and it was smaller than wooden in middle wooden. Well, on, anyway, so, uh, so that's, uh, that's that. But it is stronger than sort of significant things, yeah? Uh, if you try some, you know, play this game. I don't know what the exact degree consistency is for LSA. I know it's weaker than wooden, you know, wooden, and I know it's stronger than any reasonable way you want to say that you have lots of strong cardinals that are limits of wooden. Now you can say measurable limit of strongs that are limits of wooden, and etc. Any anything like that you say is weaker than LSA. Okay, but this is not the last the last slide, uh, the first slide. But, uh, since 2009, I have tried to get, bring everything to the level of wooden cardinals, the limit of wooden cardinals. Uh, of course, you want to go to super strong. That would be the goal, yeah? But that's harder. Uh, this was the first slide. So assume AD plus, and there is no inner model with the wooden cardinal that is itself a limit of wooden cardinals. Then you can prove generation and the hybrid form of mouse set conjecture. Don't worry about that. You don't need to know what that is. Uh, now this is not, uh, uh, I was hoping to finish writing it up in the summer, but then I had, uh, we had a second child, and then it all went <laughs> south. <laughs> so, correct, but the proof is not written, so I don't, I hope, you know, there's no mistake. Uh, if you combine that with recent results of steel, then what you get is that the, uh, if you assume there is no inner model with the wooden kernel that is itself a limit of wooden kernels, then part of that model is a mouse. Okay, so it, this kind of brings us at the level of wooden limit of wooden. Uh, there are ideas to get up to super strong as for another time, but there is a major failure for uh, uh, I, uh, uh, and you know, I, I feel that there is a failure here because we didn't get that PFA implies wooden. In fact, that problem seems really difficult. Uh, but there is some consolation for me. <laughs> uh, uh, the you could prove that the following theories are equally consistent: that there are divergent models of AD plus. There is a new model with the wooden kernel that is itself a limit of wooden kernel. Uh, so the uh, one is a really strange phenomena. It says you have two uh, two models of determinacy, 
in which you have sets of you have A in one, B in the other set of reals that are not wedge compatible. So you cannot reduce one to the other by wedge reduction. Yeah? If you think through large cardinals, you know, uh, under large cardinals we have university pair sets, and those are wedge compatible. So this divergent one is sort of off. It's kind of a non-standard model. It's a very strange phenomenon for me, and, and wouldn't force the existence of such a thing from wooden limit elements. Okay, so I stop there. Thank you.